Thank you for being here today. We're grateful that you've chosen to worship with us. Today, I want to talk to you on the subject of stop, drop, and roll. This may be more for me than it is for you today. But I do pray you come looking for God. That you've come to experience His presence. Because only in His presence can we change only in his presence and so I want to encourage you today of some things that have gone on in my life that unintentionally I didn't even recognize I was doing and I believe I've caused damage to the body of Christ and I believe we all do that from time to time unintentionally so I pray today you'll be encouraged as we learn how to stop, drop, and roll. You've heard that your entire life by the fire department. Stop, drop, and roll. And I believe it can apply to our Christian life. And I want to share with you how. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to James chapter 3. And I also will be flipping to James chapter 4. But James is the half-brother of Jesus Christ, and he is in an attempt to help these believers in Jerusalem to really experience life. And that's one of the desires that, that we have. Man, Jesus Christ wants you to have life, to have life more abundantly, not for it to be stole from you and robbed from you and your joy just quenched. He wants it to be overflowing in your life. And so James is, has to deal with some practical teaching on how to be an overcomer in a certain area. Now, I shouldn't be encouraged because we should have overcome this by now. But they had the same problem in the first century that we still have today in the church. It's called, you ready? Everybody look at it, point at it. Tongue. I don't know about you, but this thing right here keeps me in more trouble than anything I know in my entire life. I am the professional, take your shoe off, take your sock off, and put your foot in your mouth. Does anybody else have that problem except me? Few of you want to admit you have that problem. Well, I hope today I can help solve that just a little bit. Okay, so in James chapter 3, starting in verse 2, it says this, For we all stumble in many things. Yes. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, also able to bridle his whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and they turn their whole body... Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by the very small rudder everywhere the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body, and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Father, we're grateful for this day. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for the people who come and freely give their hearts to you that invite your presence to come and be among us today, that we may hear from you that our hearts would receive the word of God and Lord that we would apply it that we may live life to the fullest and the abundance and so Father I pray today Lord that you would speak and Father that we would apply your word not for our benefit but that it would glorify you for we ask this in Jesus name Amen Stop, drop and roll I'm 48 years old. I accepted Christ when I was 22, moved here to Wilmington. 
Grew up not in church, so I have no church uh, tradition or background. All I knew is I was a heathen and I needed a savior and I accepted Christ into my life and then I allowed him to be my life. And, and still, I struggle with many things. Does anybody else struggle with anything in here? Thank you. Thank you. Two of you. Appreciate that. No, there's, there's more than that, but I appreciate that. But what I have realized over these 25 years of, of journey with Jesus Christ, there are few things that have the ability and power to ruin a relationship quicker than this little member of our body called a tongue. And that's why God is addressing this. There's hardly nothing in the Word of God that He doesn't address. It's just that we, have, we, we never sometimes become overcomers of it. But He addresses just about everything we will ever face uh, in life. But it's, it's this little thing that ruins more relationships. I put it like this. It's usually like critical, inaccurate, defaming, hostile, slanderous words. Has anybody ever been harmed by words? All of us probably have. I have a question. Has anyone ever said anything untrue about you? That's a joke, right? Has anybody ever communicated something behind your back and then you found out about it later? Has anyone ever said something about you to someone else that was questioning your motives, your character, your integrity? And then the question will be, how did that make you feel? How did that make your heart feel? Another question, how did it affect the relationship? Now, we're in the house of God today, but what I'm going to share works whether we're in here, the house of God as the body of Christ, or whether we're at the workplace, whether we're at school, whether we're wherever we're at. These principles still work, no matter where you find yourself to be. I've come to realize that this tongue has the ability to direct life. This tongue has the ability to destroy life. This tongue has the ability to defile not only life, but to defile this whole body. And when I talk about here, I'm talking about Northside, but it affects the whole kingdom of God. What somebody else may think about Christianity And so today, I want to help you as I am an attempt to help myself as I have gone through this journey. And let me let me share with you, I haven't arrived. I don't think I ever will till Jesus Christ returns. However, the tongue has the ability to direct life. James gives us two examples here, a bit and a rudder. And when I talk about the ability to direct life, When I talk about that, this tongue should be used to build up, to encourage, to cheer on, not to tear down, not to hurt. I think we do an injustice sometimes when we we don't tell our children there's nothing that they cannot do. My girls, you say, well, I can't. Yes, you can. Well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. The only way they would know, our children will know they can't do something if we tell them. Like, you'll never amount to anything. You're worthless. You're stupid. That's not true. But you know what they hang on to? What we said. And it happens in the workplace. You a lazy bum, Paul Butler. Oh, you got a broken leg. I'm sorry. No, he's got a broke leg and I knew that. Would that affect Paul? I think so. Unless Paul recognizes, I'm not lazy. He recognizes his own self-worth, his own self-respect, his own self-esteem. 
It, w- it won't bother him. But why, would I, why should I say that to him? That would be a good question to ask. I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> why would I even say that? So we have the ability to build up or to tear down in people's lives. Whether our families, whether our church family, whether our workplace. And so James gives two illustrations or two examples here of the bit and the rudder. The bit in a horse's mouth. Many of you may be like me and grew up uh, with horses. And if you jump on the back of a horse without a bit in their mouth, what usually happens? They're gone. They may take off running. Or how are you going to stop them? And usually you don't unless you fall off. Now, I was taught that you could grab the, the mane of that, that hair on that horse and you could twist it real tight around your hand and you could pull back, but it's not going to work as well as, as a bit. And you can pull to the left or to the right and you may direct them. But if you had that bit that lays across their tongue, it lays across their tongue, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and they pull back on that bit, they're going to stop. They're going to stop. You're going to pull this way. They're going to go that way. And so just like a horse who's very, very powerful with just a little bit in his mouth, you can control his entire body. And that's what James is saying here. Just this little, little tongue can cause so much damage. It can direct life, but yet it can bring life too. It all depends on how you use it. Then he uses a rudder, which is on the back of a ship or a back of an airplane. Big ship, big plane. The pilot just turns that rudder left or right, and that ship goes where he directs it every time. Just like when I surrender myself to the Spirit of God and this tongue to the Spirit of God, He can direct my words that can bring life or that can bring death to somebody. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I want to be one that brings life. I want to bring one that directs a person's life to say, you can be all that God desired for you to be. You don't have to listen to the lies out here. You can listen to the truth. So our tongue is just a small member, yet it's powerful in setting directions of people's lives. With it, I should encourage. I should direct. I should build up. You know, it could be like I could tell my, my daughter who's a senior this year that, hey, Taylor, you're not going to amount to anything. I could say that to her, but that's not true. She is somebody. God made her somebody. She's who she is. And she can do anything that she desires to do with the power that she has in God. She's one of the smartest girls I know. See, I could say, I appreciate you not being dumb like your daddy. (laughs) Because she got her mama's brains. But the bottom line is, I'm not dumb. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. I'm not dumb. I just didn't apply myself. There were more things more important than that. But I can tell you this. uh, My heart jumped for joy this past Friday when I took her to a university to see uh, if she would think about going to school there. And of course, uh, she likes basketball. But here's her comment, which drives me crazy. Well, I don't think I'm as good as the rest of them. You are. So you're already putting yourself down. You are as good as they are. You can work as hard as they work. You can shoot as good as they can shoot. You can. You try. You go after what you want. But you know, college is pretty expensive, right? Well, I'm sitting there and that that admissions director say it's going to be at least $25,000 a year. What? What? Well, he looks at Taylor's transcripts. He's like, wow, she's pretty smart. Yeah, she said, he said, well, I can give y'all the presidential scholarship. Well, what's that? 
It covers everything except her books. Everything. And I, you would only have to pay $7,200 a year. I'm like, yes, Lord Jesus. That's where you're going. We ain't going nowhere else. <laughs> but we, she, she, won't, she has a few others, but it does make a difference. It does. You know, that's her saying, I can't do this calculus. I can't do this uh, advanced calculus. Yes, you can. I can't, but you can. I can cheer you on. I can't do it, but you can. But I could if I applied myself. I just have no desire to know that now. <laughs> so, this tongue can encourage, but also, look, look what it says in verse 8. It says, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. That's what our tongue is. Without the Spirit of God controlling our tongue, it is full of poison. So it has the ability to direct life, but secondly, it has the ability to destroy life. Again, James uses two illustrations, fire, and he uses a world of iniquity. Something about fire just amazes me. It has the unique ability to reproduce itself. Just, just with a little... Little kindle of fire, if you add just some wood to it or some coal or something, it starts to blaze back up. You thought it was out, but you add fuel to it. It blazes into a, a ferno. The Bible teaches in Proverbs, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. So let me, let me apply that principle to the body. Where there is no gossip, the fire goes out. In other words, I don't need to add nothing to the conversation. I don't need to be one to come and destroy or to slander somebody else. So if Nikki decides he's got an issue with Chris... And he wants to come speak to me about it. I'm going to teach him this principle of stop, drop, and roll. Because biblically, if he has a problem with Chris, he should go talk to Chris. It's what God would desire for him to do. So those two could work it out. And that way it doesn't get messed up. I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. There's first degree slander, second degree slander, and third degree slander. That takes place sometimes in our lives. But he says the fire, just a little spark, just a little bit, can cause massive destruction. And sometimes we don't even mean for it to. It just happens. Because something's happened in our life and it's rooted way down into our hearts. Or there's something that we just don't like, we can't stand, and then when... When somebody comes and brings that to you and they're talking about this situation, that spark rekindles. And now it's an issue for you. And now the next thing you know, as, as Scripture teaches, we are putting deadly poison out there. We are hurting people. And they're walking around way down instead of living life because we chose to hurt them with our words. And what happens is we don't just hurt them, we hurt the entire body. We hurt the entire kingdom of God. Just a little spark. Let me, sh let me illustrate. Just a little spark. How much damage it can do. October the 8th. 1871. It's called the Great Chicago Fire. Mrs. O'Leary. Decided to go milk her cow. At 8 o'clock at night. While she went to the barn to milk her cow, a lantern, little old lantern, was knocked over. You think you might be able to contain that in a short amount of time, but she couldn't. When it was all said and done, the Great Fire of Chicago had destroyed 17,000 buildings, had took 300 lives, and left 123,000 people homeless. 
That's how a little spark can cause massive damage. What about in the body of Christ? What if Nikki shares something to Chris? And then Chris decides he's going to go share it with Stephen. And Stephen decides he's going to share it with Terry. And Terry decides he's going to share it with Phil. And Phil decides I'm going to share it with Neil. Do you think whatever Nikki shared with Chris is what Neil got? Never is. Never is. The bottom line is, why did you start that big blaze? We hear what we want to hear. And by nature, man, we like, we like the new, new gossip. We like the new stories. We want all the details. And if it, if it wasn't good enough, we'll make up some. That's what we do. I mean, that's just human nature. And so just a little bit can cause a whole blaze. Then he uses a world of iniquity. That's a strong word, iniquity. And it means an evil system, an evil rebellion, a wicked or wretched scheme of humanness. So what, what does that mean? I mean, it's in me. I want to know the good stuff. Why do you think so many people, when they go to the grocery store, where's all the gossip uh, magazines? Check out. And you sit there and you read that stuff. They want you to buy it, and you're going to believe that it's truth. And then you're going to go tell somebody the aliens are here. <laughs> now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I've been saying that uh, Ebola... Uh, if you walk, if you walk, there, that, 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 that's a virus and we're all going to turn into zombies. <laughs> now, I've just been joking about that. So please don't go out here and say that I said that. I am joking about that. Uh, but it is a serious thing uh, going on with that. But our, our system is that we like to see that. And we believe, a lot of times we believe that. We believe what the magazines say. We believe what somebody else says without going to find out the facts or the context. Somebody sent me something last night. Uh, the Church Hill song uh, made a, a statement. And the next thing uh, you know, they're getting hammered because they made a statement and somebody took that statement, changed one word of it, and change the whole context of what the pastor was saying. You just started a whole fire. Now here's what I'm trying to say. How does that help the body of Christ? Because it's going to affect somebody. Who may be thinking about coming to Christ. But now all we do is tear each other down. It's just not healthy. And, and can I share this? I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking. If this is hitting you. No, it came to me first. Because I've done some serious damage over 25 years of being a born-again believer. He says up here, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. I'm not there yet. And if I'm not there, to be sure, some of you may not be there. You may need as much help uh, as I need. And so no other body part has such far-reaching potential for disaster instruction as the tongue does. And this is why James is revealing this system to us because he wants us to live life to the fullest. But naturally, by nature, naturally who we are, we want, we want to know something. We, we want to know the, the good, juicy stories. But James shares in chapter 4 this. Flip over one because he emphasizes, he's talking about the tongue. And then he, he says, hey, with this tongue, this is what you shouldn't do with your tongue. He says over here in verse 11 of chapter 4, do not speak evil against one another. He who speaks evil against his brother and judges his brother speak evil of the law and judges the law. They must have had a serious problem 
in the church at Jerusalem. That tongue must have been running rampant. But I got to thinking about it. That happens to us. We have the power to direct life, to destroy life, or we go a step further and we defile life. Now that's inside the body of Christ. That is focused here. How do we do that? How do we defile this body? And James just said it in, in verse 4 with our speech. With the words that, that we share. We defile this body. What happens when the fire's put out? Is there still damage? What kind of damage is there when the fire's put out? You can talk. I like interaction. You're not in trouble. Smoke. Water. Even though you put out the fire, is there smoke damage? See, smoke permeates. It contaminates everything. And so it really has to be almost uh, ripped out and, and started fresh again. And we have to be careful that we don't allow that tongue to do the exact same thing because it can, it can put words into people that won't even think in that way. When he says not to speak evil of a brother, he's talking about don't slander your brother or your sister. Don't tear them down. Have you ever thought why we do that? It's because we're not happy with who we are in Christ. And can I tell you, in Christ, you are somebody. You don't have to be like somebody else. He made you who you are. And then he placed you in this body as he desired. He gave you gifts. He gave you passion because this entire body don't function to its fullest or its effectiveness without each one of you. And I don't know about you, but that says every one of you are valuable and vital to the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. Everyone that claims the name of Jesus. And so this tongue can defile. It says in Galatians 5, 9, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And so what I'm sharing is this. I should not slander any of you. Now, what would that look like? I should not speak evil of any of you. If, it, if I am, it reveals something's wrong in me because the lie is, if Chris will change, my entire world will be great. Really? I bear and guarantee if Chris changes, I'll find something else to complain about, to slander about. Well, if Mark... I love my brother, sorry. A bad thought came to my mind. See, see, I'm so grateful God gave us teeth and two lips. See, you just thought them teeth were there to eat. It's a cage. It's a cage. To lock up that tongue behind your mouth and the lips will shut down on it. So I'm learning how not to say the first thing that comes to my mind because that's when I put my foot in my mouth. And I can say that about Mark. And Mark knows I'd be joking because I love him. And we have a relationship. But what if we didn't? And I, and I said what I was just thinking. Now, he could take that to heart. It could go down into his, his heart and it could wound him. And so now, if I offended him every time somebody talking about me says, well, you know, that, that Mike, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. He ain't going to think so. And what's going to come out of his mouth? Poison. And so here, here's how I define slander. Okay? Here's how I define it. And then I, there's three degrees of slander. Slander is saying something untrue that makes someone think less of the person that you're speaking of. Or saying something that is true about a person, but your tone or your body language makes the person think less of the one you're speaking of. Now, I'm going to try to illustrate this with the three degrees. 
Because there's first degree slander, second degree slander, third degree slander. And let me share with you, I've done them all. Okay? I've done every one of them. And I'm trying to allow the Spirit of God to help me overcome all of this. Let me give you first degree slander. This happens unintentionally. This happens just in normal conversation. You're not even, try, you're not even thinking about slandering somebody. But somebody may just ask you a question. You're on the workplace. Uh, you got a memo that came down from the head, the CEO. And he says that, hey, starting this Wednesday, we're going to have to work an hour over every day to make this deadline. Okay? You can already imagine the conversations. So I may say... Hey, John, what did you think about what the boss had to say? And the next thing I know, John has done crucified the CEO of our company. Well, he don't care about us. All he's worried about is making a dollar. He don't, he don't think about what we got to do. Now, that, that's just normal conversation. That happens because I worked at Corning. I know that happens. And so that takes place. What we don't think about is this. Why, did the, why, why would the boss ask that? To hurt you? Or maybe to provide more for you? Because if we meet deadlines, we get more contracts. If we get more contracts... We make more income. Maybe he can provide more for you. But see, we look at our workplace sometimes just as a job instead of recognizing we're part of the team. Church isn't a place I get to come. You're my family. You're my family. I need you. We need each other. Or maybe something like this. Hey, what'd you think about what the pastor said? Just an honest question. You don't have no malice in your heart, but that person who may have a problem with the pastor, <laughs> just pukes up all this poison and deceit that's in them. You know? It was just innocent. That's first degree slander. I don't know who he thinks he is. Uh... If you read scripture, he's the shepherd of this body under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ who's been called to give direction and vision to lead God's fellowship at Northside and I'm just using Northside as God's directed him. Oh, why did he make that decision? Just to hurt you. See, that's what we think, but that's not the truth. Because he's looking at the whole. How can this help the whole body of Christ? How can this help us fulfill the, the vision, the mission? What is that? Here's what it is. Jesus Christ is the one and only hope of this entire world. And if we do not get that to the out there and in here and everywhere else we go, they have no hope. No hope. But we have to work together as that. And we don't need to tear each other up. We ought to be encouraging and building up. Hey, if I don't like something that Chris does, which is a lot, then I just go to him. I don't go to Paul and I don't go to Ray. I go to him and him alone and say, Chris, we, you're my brother. We need to work this out. Because if this stays down in me much longer... I may throw it back up onto somebody else. That, that's what should happen. And so then me and Chris come out closer and able to continue to conquer for the Lord Jesus Christ. Second degree. Oh, this is, oh, Debbie, you're going to love this. This happens with well-meaning prayer request. Now, I'm going to try to put the body language into this as much as I can. You may be in a small group, a Sunday school class, or you may just be at the restaurant. And you'll say, 
hey, guys, I really need for y'all to pray for Bob and Sue. You know, they're having some marital issues. You know, I, I, I see why knowing that, you know, because her son just come out of rehab and everything. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't know that. But please pray for him too. Why can't you just pray for Bob and Sue? See, we, we want to know, when, when I would ask, if I ask any of you in here, say, I really need for you to pray for Pastor Kitty. The first thing that comes to our mind most time, what's up? What's going on? How about just praying for him? Because here's what I know. God knows what's going on, and God's the only one that can fix it. But we'll, we'll take it to the umpth degree because if that's shared in a prayer request, do you really think it's going to stay right there? <laughs> Somebody laughing because they know that it ain't. Then there's third degree. Third degree slander. Happens under the disguise of getting counsel for a difficult situation. What it really is is that you're trying to build your side up. So I used uh, Truett Booth at 8 o'clock and I said, say Truett comes to me and says, hey Mike, I really have a problem with Joe, which is one of his best friends. And I really don't like what Joe's doing. And, you know, Joe, Joe Lee's the uh, Awana, the director of our, one of our Awana TNT boys. And I really, I really just have some issues and I, and I wanted to get your take on it. Now see, that sounds good. He's, he's just coming... I was looking for uh, wise counsel. Well, you came to the wrong person. No, <laughs> I'm looking for wise counsel. No, what that does is this. It could cause a person to think less of Joe because of what Truett said. Instead of Truett just going to Joe. See, I've come to a place in my life, I don't take sides. There's not but one side to take and it's God's side. So when I have somebody come to me, and whether it's in marriage, whether it's in just basic relationships, and they're sharing their side of the story, they can share to their blue in the face. I know there's another side over here. And I'm trying to wade through what this is, and now I need to hear from this person. And then my job is to bring these together, not to say you're right and you're wrong, but to build them up. To get them connected back to God because there's been a breakdown somewhere. That's why we usually slander is because we're not happy with ourselves. And if we can make somebody else look bad, it makes us look good. We feel better about ourselves. And that's just not healthy. We're all valuable. We're all important. We're all needed. And what we don't realize, if we're the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12, it says if one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. We all suffer. I love the second part of that. If one part rejoices, why don't we all rejoice? We all should rejoice. Let me give you a prime example. Daryl goes out and buys a new 2014 He's not, Mary. Calm down. 2014 GMC Sierra. I know he would. And he, he drives it to church. Okay? And, and y'all see it. What's the first comment that comes out of some people's mouth? Must be nice. Must be nice. Hey, why can't you rejoice with him? It is nice. It is. He worked for it. He earned it. Why can't I rejoice with him? Must be nice to go on vacation. See, that, that leaves a negative. <laughs> it is nice to go on vacation. See, we'll make a judgment before we know all the facts. Yeah, he went and got him a new truck. He'd been driving that other one around for 20 years. It was a rust bucket. 
So you didn't know that. But we automatically, <laughs> yeah, it must be nice to cut hair, Karen. Yeah. You went and bought you a new four Ranger. I saw that. She cuts my hair, so that's why. <laughs> and she got a new truck. I rejoice with that. She needed a new truck. That old green one she had about to fall apart. That's why I always paid her extra. I'm like, my goodness, you need a new truck. No. Nah. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen to this. Satan's desire is to tear us down. His desire is to cause the kingdom of God never to impact anybody. And he does that by us speaking evil to one another. Because here's the thing. Whether a person's in the body of Christ or whether they're not. And I'm slandering somebody. I'm slandering them to them. Okay? What is that doing for them? That's making them think less of that person. But that ain't encouraging them. And I got a thought. What makes us think if we're listening to somebody slander somebody else that the person slandering isn't slandering you too? Just a thought. I say just not slander anybody. I say love one another. Encourage one another. Walk with each other because we all struggle in many things. We do that because we want to feel better about ourselves. So I got four things that I've dealt with, okay? These are mine. These are mine. That I'm going to share with you. If you can identify with them, great. And I, and I pray you'll do what I'm in the process and have been doing. Why do we slander? How do we get caught up? Why do sincere believers get caught up in this snare of slander? Number one, we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid that maybe somebody won't like us if we don't listen to their garbage. I won't have any friends. Can I tell you what? If you trust God, you'll always have friends. Amen. And I mean friends that stick with you through thick and thin. Not, not acquaintances over here. I don't have to fear if, if Mark comes and he's fixing to unload on me and I say, stop. Stop. This is not going to be helpful to the kingdom of God. If you got a problem with Mr. Gene, you really need to go speak to Mr. Gene. I would be more than happy to mediate between you two. But y'all two need to get this straight because you're going to cause damage to the body of Christ. And you're going to, listen, you're going to cause damage to yourself. Because you're not going to have a healthy relationship with somebody else. It's going to, it's going to make your every relationship that you have will run through that filter. Number two, my favorite. We cast blame and avoid responsibility. Why didn't the life center get locked up? Well, Nikki was supposed to lock it up. I put him in charge. But what, what did I just do? I just slandered Nikki. I just threw Nikki under the bus. And what usually happens from that is this. Yeah, he did that last month too. He forgot to lock it up last month. Always chasing squirrels. He forgets. That, that's, that's cast and avoiding responsibility. What I should do, it's my responsibility. I delegated it to Nikki. This has not happened. This is an example. So don't, just, just checking. And so what I should do is like, you know, you're right. We, we, we missed that one. I, I didn't say Nikki missed that one. We missed that one. We missed that one and we will work to improve. See, don't that sound so much better? And then if Nikki's part of my team, we will work on it together. To make it become all it should be. Now when a person hears that. They think they want to be part of that team. Man that. They work together. They, they're, they're trying to reach the same goal. They're not tearing each other down. I, I want to be on that team. Why do you think so many people go to Duke basketball? <laughs> I 
That's not true, but insecurity. Insecurity. You're not happy with who you are. Some things in your life have caused you to be insecure. And I, and I personally believe all of us have some type of insecurity, whatever it may be. But we feel like we have to be like somebody or do something somebody else, and we really don't. You're who you are. God created you unique. He's given His Spirit to you. He's given you gifts that He didn't give to somebody else. He's given you a personality that He didn't give to somebody else. He's given you passions that He didn't give to somebody else. But when you put all of those things together, it works to His good to glorify Him. And we have to accept who we are. Who He made me to be. I'm not the most eloquent speaker that you will ever hear. I crucify the English language. I make up new words that don't exist. And you can pick on that all you want to, but that's who I am. I'm good with that. I'm good that you call my little hand starfish. <laughs> you know? I I'm comfortable with who I am. But some people are not. And, and used to, that may bother me, but it doesn't bother me. Do I try to improve on, on those things? I do. I really do. Alexa, share with me at 8 o'clock. I only messed up two words. <laughs> That's a huge improvement. <laughs> and then lastly, we like to know the latest gossip. These are things that sincere believers, and I'm thinking of me personally, you can identify if you want to. We just like to know what's going on, even if it's not true. We, we just like to know. And so as I went through, through this whole thing, you may struggle with none of these. You may struggle with one of these. You may struggle with all four like, like I have. But we naturally speak against somebody because we're trying to make ourselves feel better. And you don't have to do that. How, how do I overcome that? In Colossians 3, the Bible says this in, in verse 2 and following. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. But now you yourself are to put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheme, filthy language that comes from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you, me, has put off, I have the ability because of the Spirit, to put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new man according to the image of him who created him. And so here's what I want you to remember today. Recognize this tongue needs to be tamed. The Bible says you cannot tame it. Only the Holy Spirit of God can tame your tongue. But I want to leave you with this principle today. And it's one you can remember. The fire department had it right. We were in small group. This is when this hit me. We, we attempted to go one week without slandering anybody. Because it's just a natural thing that we do. But as we went through this in small group, a couple of weeks ago, it hit me. We got down to the discussion questions and we're talking about this and it hit me. I said, you know, the fire department has it right. And you ought to saw it in 15 people look at me like, what are you on? <laughs> the fire department had it right. I said, we need to learn how to stop, drop, and roll. And they're like, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Listen, when you walk up, to a conversation and you know it's defaming somebody else or belittling somebody else, you ought to stop. Stop. Or maybe you're the one sharing it. Stop. Have the courage to look at the person and say, man, we really need to stop. Number two, we, you really need to drop this because this is not healthy to the body of Christ. It's not glorifying God. It's not building up the body. 
uh, if you got an issue with somebody, you really need to go speak to them. Let's just drop this. And then you need to roll on. Roll right on out the door. Just get away from it. So stop, drop, and roll. I have to do that just about every day. From the time that we started, I, this came to me. I started doing that. Somebody say, what were you going to say? Nothing. <laughs> no, I really want to I really know what you say. No. It would not be helpful. I'm not going to say it. Because those words can do more damage. It can direct life. It can destroy somebody's life. Or it can defile their life. And I do not want to be one that's defiling, destroying somebody's life. I want to be one that's directing it towards God. That they may be all that they can be for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I want. That the body of Christ will be the body of Christ. And when people hear us, see us, they know that we have believed with all our heart that He is the true and the living God. And that we believe that He is the one and only hope that this world has. Would you stand with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful for this day. And Lord, I pray today that we would apply the principle of stopping, dropping, and roll. That, Father, we would recognize that our words carry influence. So I pray from this day forward that we be men and women of the Word of God and that the words we speak would lead to life. And so, Father, I recognize that there's believers here who have trusted Christ, but, Father, maybe they recognize they found themselves in the trap I pray they feel the liberty today to know that we'll have men and women, whether it's here at the front, in the back, at the red tent, that are here just to pray for them, to encourage them, to love them. And then there's others that have never trusted Jesus Christ. They recognize they need Him. And Father, He loves them. He loves them more than they love their self. So, Father, I pray by your spirit that they would sense the liberty, the freedom to give their heart and their life to Jesus Christ this day. Again, there's people here at front, the red tent. We're here to help you enjoy life. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you would speak. And we would listen. So, Father, thank you for an awesome day of worship. Thank you for the spirit that filled this place. I pray, Father, we carry you with us to this world. Wherever we find ourselves, help us to be salt and light. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.